Greetings from Goad Machine Works Incorporated. Today is January the 20th, 2022, and we're going to have another instructional video today here in the shop. At the beginning of this video, I want to plainly state that I have not been financially compensated in any way, shape, or form by any of the commercial companies that are mentioned in this video. It is for reference purposes only. Today, we are going to be looking at how to sharpen the relief on a four flute center reamer, 82 degree included angle, one inch diameter, and here in my hand is one that has been ground. I'm going to show you today how we did it and the machines we used. First off, I'm starting out with my number two Cincinnati tool and cutter grinder on which if we come in here and look at the nameplate, if I get the light moved here just a little, we have a DS grinder fixture from Royal Oak Tool and Machine Company. Uh, this came with my grinder when I bought it at a, with a lot of tooling. Uh, the DS grinder fixture is all actually the fixture head off of a dedicated relief grinding machine, but it works very well on the number two Cincinnati here. Uh, Royal Oak still has parts for these heads. I have bought a couple of uh, cams and an index plate for it, and I gotta give the folks credit. They're right, uh, right helpful folks and right good folks to, uh, to do business with. Now this grind, cam gr grinder is a cam operated fixture. Here you have a pawl that you drop down, you rotate, and when it drops in, there's an index plate that my finger is pointing at here that times the flutes of the cutter to the lobes of the cam. The cam rides against this cam follower, and if you look down here at the bottom, back in here by my finger, there's a big die spring in there, and that keeps the load on it. So as you rotate, and I'm going to have to pull it this out, and then as you rotate the cam around, you can kind of see the thing wobbles a little bit. That actually sets your relief that you're grinding on your tool. I'm just doing center reamers today on it. You can relieve taps on it. You can do step drills on it. Basically, you're only limited by your imagination what you can do with this thing if you've got a very creative mind. Now, if you look closely at the center reamer, I have blued the entire center reamer. And I did that for two reasons. One, so that I'm going to grind a little bit and then stop and show you so you can visually watch the progression of the grinding as the bluing disappears on the uh, relief. And also, this center reamer has been abused by someone previous to my owning it, and the OD was kind of scuffed up and pretty rough and nasty looking. Well, I like my ground tools to look nice when I'm finished with them. So once we're done here grinding the relieves, then I'm going to go over here, put it in the uh, monoset, and I'm just going to spin grind the OD. Spin grinding the OD of the body back here on the circular part, has, you know, it does nothing to improve the cutting action. It just looks nice. And I like my tool. I'm a perfectionist. I like my tools to look nice. Now, if you, you, you notice also, here is the center line mark for the spindle for the tool and cutter grinder. I have the center line of the tool and cutter grinder spindle on the same center line as the fixture. Now, if you look here, I've got a, I've got a fairly narrow wheel on it. And I'm going to put the wheel, get over here where the light's a little better. This is a Radiac wheel. It's a six inch diameter, quarter inch wide, inch and a quarter hole. And it's a WA60K Victor 8 wheel. Uh, max RPM is 4138. And I've been buying these wheels from Traverse Tool Company down in South Carolina. And they're a right fine uh, bunch of folks to do business with. Now, I'm going to stop talking here in a minute, and I'm going to turn on the dust collection system, which you can see underneath the uh, 
grinding wheel here on the number two and also over here I've got it blocked off right now on the monoset and here shortly when we resume filming my beautiful wife Vita is going to be doing the filming so I can have both hands free to uh, operate the uh, the tool and cutter grinders and such so I'm going to cease talking here for a moment and get everything turned on and when we come back we will show the relief grinding on the uh, on the fixture here and just w before I quit normally I go in and I just I'll, I'll roll the camera around to the high point of the back corner of the relief is is on line on the center line with here and then I feed in very carefully with the end feed control here on the number two till I just barely get a spark then I'll come out and I'll just take a pass with that to kind of set, get my high point and then after that I will take normally each pass you see me in feed will be approximately one thousandth of an inch in feed once I get all the bluing ground off then I will visually check all the edges make sure I've got all the little uh, dings and checks ground out of those then I'll probably take another half thousandth in feed and then run oh, three or four basically spark out passes like you would on a uh, on a surface grinder so that's basically what we're going to show you today. So I'm going to shut up at this point, and when we turn back on, my beautiful wife Vita will be doing the recording. Just roughing a little bit. And I just take a couple passes to get everything cleaned up, and then we'll do a fit pretty finish pass on it. And as you can see, as we're rotating the handle, the fixture is oscillating back and forth, and that's providing the relief for the cutting edges. I'm in feeding about one thousandth of an inch per pass. Take about a half a thousand pass and then do the spark out on it. There's about a half a thousand in feed. Now I'm just run a very slow cross traverse and let everything clean up nice and pretty across here. of information this BS grinder fixture as best we can tell was built somewhere in the 1940s. Still running fine. Fixture down here a safe distance away. Engage the ball in one of the notches. 
loosen the collet and pull out the cutter. And here's the cutter, nice and pretty edges. Now I'm going to take it over and put it in the uh, monoset. I'm going to turn the light on the monoset grinder. Now, in case you're wondering what this plastic bag is, I have three machines hooked up to the same dust collector. And for the two I'm not using at the time, I just put a uh, plastic bag. This one got stuck on a piece of duct tape that I've got in here. There we go. Now I'll just go over here and put that over the spigot for the number two Cincinnati. Just a little. I call it bump and rod. All right. Now when I grind on here, I want to leave back in there. I want to stay out a little ways, a little bit farther out the back of the cutter to the nut here than the width of my wheel, so I can grind past it. Now I'm going to lock the spindle here, take the spanner wrench, tighten the collet nut, release that. Now I'm going to turn master power on. Body of this cutter had been gnarled up by somebody who wasn't very particular pretty badly. Come down here and clear, and we'll just take a couple of light cuts, just enough to clean the body up. Just like I said before, it doesn't affect the cutting of it, it just looks nice, and I like my tools to look nice. Still not quite cleaned up. Yeah, we're just grinding a been grinding a cutter here on the monoset. Just a second, I'll show you what it looks like when she's done. I still see a little blue under there. 
keep grinding till the blue disappears and we know we've got it all ground up. One more pass should have this baby done. And there we are, nice and bright and shiny all the way around. So that is the end of the video of that, and have a good day.